forgot it. Well, um, you would not be taking that thought captive because you lost it. But that's uh, that's not even what the phrase means. So, um, for for those of you who aren't staring at the show notes as we go through this this podcast, that's actually the title of the next section. Um, taking taking your thoughts captive and. This is something that I think uh, we've kind of been building up to. Uh, you know, we've we've had plenty of different conversations about um, how people think. You know, and 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 this is really all come as a result of you know studying processes, studying how people work together in teams, right? And and studying efficiencies and workflows and processes, and and figuring out how to how to best go about doing that. Um, and, and and also personally, this is something that I struggle with, right? So so I kind of wanted to put this out and, and just say, you know, um, if we're if we're here to talk about real life, I mean, this is something that's really in my life. Yeah. Right. So this this goes back to uh, a, a verse in the New Testament of the Bible, Second Corinthians ten five. Um, they're talking about uh, bringing every thought into captivity. Right, and and that's just a, a a snippet of the verse, but but uh, it, it it really kicks off a conversation, especially in evangelical circles, about you know what is, what does that mean? How are, how are we to do that? How are we to take thoughts captive? What does that even mean? And and actually, the first time that I started going to the community group that I do, uh, the 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 wife of the the host said that phrase I think about five times that night. Um, so I don't know if she had just read a book about it or if that was something that she was just acutely aware of uh, in in that evening, but it, it really stuck in my head, right? And and I, I tried to figure out, you know, what, what does that really mean? And we've we've talked a lot uh, about about thinking and about thought and, and how to process things. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to figure out what uh, taking your thoughts captive is supposed to prevent against, right? Uh, and, and the first thing I, I, I could think of was was really colloquially known as like navel gazing, right? So just kind of focusing on the things that you're doing and, and thinking about how awesome you are. Uh, and and, and I, also, I also have this, this thing where um, I try not to lose any kind of a thought. And we, we, we talked about this when we were talking about Camboard. It's like all yeah. these things that you're keeping in your head, if you get them out, you're Yeah, right. Then then right. then you have room to actually think. You have room yeah. to be present in the moment. You have room to, to to take on the cognitive load that you need to to do your job. Right? You you, you can't do that if you're just being constantly bombarded with ideas More, that you're yeah. trying to like wring the most out of, right? You you're just trying to squeeze absolutely everything you can cuz a thought pops in your head and you're like, "Okay, what are the implications of that?" right? And you just start just, reeling yeah yeah, yeah. You, you and 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 you could look at it from every kind of conceivable angle you could you could follow you know fantasies you know if that happens then what you know and how could i make it so that it 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 benefits me right and 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 you're just you're just you're just obsessing uh, over these thoughts right and uh i was i was just reading a a uh a book by um uh a, a pastor um, and he was talking about this being a matter of self-examination versus like introspection, especially if these thoughts are, are of like past actions or, or, or things that you did or, you know, uh, actions that you took. Right. So, so this would be this would be more so dwelling on the past than than considering something else. Right. And and I mean, how many times have have people said to themselves, you know, oh, I wish I had that comeback, you know, when he said that thing. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you can, you can dwell on that and, and it's not bad to, to examine yourself, but right. Sure. When it becomes introspection and, and morphs itself in, into a type of like morbidity where, where, where you just like obsess over that, right. And you focus on that and, and you focus on, uh, you know the the way you you could have done something versus the way you actually did that 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 becomes that becomes morbid right that's 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 where you turn into you know Gollum 
from Smeagol. You, you you just start <laughs> obsessing over that, right? And it's like I said before, it's very self centered. It's very egotistical, right? It's it's very um, I can do I can will myself into doing this thing. I I should have I should have done it better. You know, I will do it better. I I will will myself to do it better next time, right? Now I'm not saying that there's not advantages to doing that like i said self-examination is is a fine thing to have right and and it can also lead you know introspection self-examination all kind of characteristics of a a introvert right so you're going to have the typical introvert kind of characteristics right you're going to have high standards right you're going to be able to empathize right you're going to be able to be aware if not adept you know, at social situations, right? You're, you're, you're going to have that kind of conservatism. You're, you're not going to be, you know, putting yourself out there, making a fool out of yourself. Right. Um, and, and you're going to be a lot, very prone to self-improvement, right? You're, you're going to be looking at how, how can I make myself better? Um, how can I make my situations better? Right. So, so there is a lot of benefit to maybe not necessarily navel gazing, but a, a less extreme version of that, right. Where you're able to sit down and, and kind of examine your life without necessarily obsessing over it. Right. So, that being the case, you know, what, where does, where has this manifested itself in Andrew's life? Right. Well, um, I have a, I have a bullet point here. Uh, it's talking about doing the same, the crap out of for everything else. Right. And what does that mean? Well, it means like, you know, the, the same way I can, you know, clean the crap out of a bathroom. Right. Or I can, you know, uh, fix the crap out of a server. Right. Yeah. I can also eat the crap out of a pumpkin pie and I could <laughs> binge watch the crap out of a TV show. Right. And, and you know, those, those, those kind of, uh, ways where, where I'm able to, to focus in and narrow in on something. Right. And, and I just, I blank out everything around me. Um, that's that, that, really helps me when I'm trying to, to architect something, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm trying to create uh, some really complex system, I, I can't necessarily um, have any kind of outside influence bombarding me there. But, yeah. you know, the, there is that downside to that where, you know, the work hard, play hard mentality can actually get me in a lot of trouble. Um, and, and especially when it comes time to, to relax, right? I mean, if I'm playing hard, you know, if I can't watch TV hard, I can, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to win right. at TV, right? I should just kind of sit back and enjoy the show. Um, the same thing with like, uh, falling asleep, right? I'm, I'm not trying to win at sleep, right? I can't fall asleep harder, faster, yeah, right, stronger, right. better, right? <laughs> just, just kind of fall asleep. Yeah. You know, it, <laughs> relax relax your mind and, and let it go and and that's actually one of the things that's that's most difficult for me talking about like ringing every thought that comes through right like every thought that comes into my head when i lay down and i'm trying to go to sleep is not the most important thing in the world right and it it sucks to admit that because i would really want it to be and sometimes i treat it as a, if it is such right and and uh, I'm sitting here like, and actually, literally, that that ring the most out of every thought was like on my in my brain the past couple of nights. You know, I was like, oh, I gotta remember, I gotta remember to say that because if you look, at, it's not gonna be in the show notes. And I was like, oh, I gotta remember to say it. And I started dissecting. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> this isn't the time to do this. This is the time to get some sleep so I can do it tomorrow. Right. Um, another one, uh, and. And this is why I think a lot of people recommend the Pomodoro system is the ability to, to take a break or knowing when to step away. I have broken more than one thing because it happened to yeet itself across the room after my code didn't work for the upteenth million time. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and ways to ways to not put myself in that situation. Right. Um, ways to to say, look you can let it rest. Like you can, you can leave it alone, right? You don't have to think about this right now. You, this, this yeah. doesn't have to be on your mind. Right. And, and, and that sucks, especially when I'm way deep in a project because that's the only, that, that is in front of me currently right now, staring me down in the face, mano e mano, I will win this battle and, and walking away from it feels like taking an L you're yeah. Right. Which isn't the case. It, it's it's not 
it's not, you know, chuck them one up in, in, in the loss column, right? It, it is actually, I will come back to fight another day, more of a mentality, but that's not, that's not natural to me. That's, that's not the first thing I think of when I'm neck deep in something that I'm just pounding my head against the wall in, right? Um, you know, and, and there's, there's other things peripheral to that, like, you know, starting to to dwell on past mistakes, blowing them out of proportion or, you know, trying to trying to concentrate on reading. Right. When I'm trying to when when I when I'm thinking about stuff like that. Right. Trying to trying to shift my mind, trying to say, all right, now it's time to, to do something else. Right. Can I can I transition over to to reading a book without constantly in my mind thinking, thinking well, about the other thing? Right. You know, did, did I try to do that? Right. Because it, it's it's something I don't need to think about, but it comes to my mind anyways. Right. So. What do you do? What do you do? Well, there was a short made back in like the 50s or 60s. It's, it's an old, it may be black and white. It, it may not be, but um, it was uh, called uh, Safety Harm Hides at Home. And this was a, a uh, short that Riff Tracks uh, actually overdubbed with their particular style of comedy uh, and, and, and commentary. And uh, the, the catchphrase that they mock endlessly is, is aware, alert, and alive, right? And it's, it's this kind of safety woman. She's like Superman, but like the most budget kind of version. And, and she's, she's teaching like six-year-olds not to, you know, drop iron, cast iron skillets on their heads and like not jump out into traffic, right? And, and their catchphrase is aware, alert, and alive. And I'm like, that's dumb. And then I started thinking about that. I'm like, well, actually, you know what? These are like the three things that, that help, right? To, to think about how I'm interacting with these impulses or, or with these thoughts, right? Um, the, the, the first thing to do is, is, is be aware of them. Right. And, and I'm going to get into kind of in depth in a, in a minute here, but just to, to go over the, the catchphrase aware, alert, alive. Right. I mean, the first thing is to be aware of them. You can't do anything if you're not aware of it. Right. Same, same thing as, as anything else. Right. If you haven't spent time to consider your gut reaction to something, right. You, you can't modify your behavior. You can't, you can't try to try to be better. Right. You can't, you can't, you can't fix your bad habits. First thing is to be aware of it. Second thing is to be alert of it, right? To be alert. Hey, this is this is actually a thought that uh, I don't need right now, right? This is I'm I'm on alert for for thoughts that that aren't going to be conducive to whatever I'm doing. If I'm reading now, I shouldn't keep having these thoughts and encouraging these thoughts, you know, yeah. about about the busted project, right? And that's how I stay alive, right? I, and and that's that's the way to to stay alive and thrive, right? Um, so, so that being said, you know, what are some things that I've, I've found that help myself, right? Um, in Eastern meditation, they talk, they talk about quieting the monkey brain. Now there's, there's a lot of things in Eastern meditation that I don't subscribe to, but I thought this was a very interesting way to, to, to think about how, how thoughts, uh, manifest themselves. Right. And, and, and meditation is, is simply, dealing with the consequence of that. Um, and, and meditation is, is quieting your thoughts, right? And, and uh, step one, at least, right? There's, there's, there's many, many different things you can do with meditation, you know, advanced techniques and such. But like the first thing that people do when, you know, you come into an old, you know, monks, you know, whatever, right? And, and, and they sit you down in the middle of the room and they're like, all right, just concentrate on your breath, right? And quiet your, your thought. And you're like, I can do that in like, 10 seconds you're like no try to do it for like 20 minutes yeah right? right how long before your mind just starts trailing off and then your monkey brain starts telling you things oh hey did you think to you know is the stove on you know did you and and <laughs> did you lock the door before you left <laughs> exactly right. you 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 have that kind of running commentary in your mind you're like no 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 we're just gonna be silent now we're just gonna shh, we're shh, we're we're just gonna just gonna be silent and so, so that was that was a very good exercise, right? Now, uh, in an alternate way to deal with that is is having doctrine to be able to to preach to yourself, especially when it comes to 
to maintaining a, a biblical worldview, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of thoughts will come under one thing or another. Um, you know, either doubt, uncertainty, fear, you know, s- s- stuff like that, right? And and having that kind of doctrine to reassure yourself with, right, is is a very good way to also assuage your concerns about the thoughts that are that are coming in. Um, and and you know, it, that's not necessarily going to be helpful for the the more uh, day-to-day kind of experiences of, of getting frustrated with a program or, you know, uh, having other things come into your head, but like, like for, for the bigger, like self doubt issues, right. Having doctrine is, is not a bad thing to have. Right. And, you know, coming from a a biblical worldview, there's, there's, there's a lot, you know, in the new Testament uh, that talks specifically about that. Um, I'm not going to go into that here. I'm going to go through a couple more things that I found uh, particularly useful for myself. Um, w- one of those things is envisioning those thoughts as originating from a separate entity, right? Um, you see a lot of these in, in self-help, uh, you know, get thin and stay thin books or whatever like that. When you, sure. when you talk about like binge eating um, or, you know, when, when you talk about sinning, the, the, the Bible does have a really good analogy. You know, there, there are powers and principalities Right, that um, our struggle is against. So they're talking about you know Satan, evil spirits, stuff like that, um, and and the common the common way to envision that is just saying you know they're bringing these things to your mind. Right, this isn't you're you're not the thoughts that are brought to your mind. Right, you're the action that's taken on those thoughts that are brought to your mind. Right, um, in in uh, a, a book I had read a while ago because as I like to do the crap out of everything, and as Jack knows, I like to drink the crap out of some you know gin and tonics. Uh, and and you know what one one of one of the things that they were talking about is you know envisioning your you know you're binging stuff whether that's binge drinking binge eating binge whatever right imagine them as like a a, a pig right just like a, yeah. in your mind you know and, and they just name it the pig right yeah and they're like i'm not going to eat pig slop that's what the pig walk and the the pig will squeal to you and and the pig will bring these thoughts to your head and then it's up to you to deal with those thoughts Right. And so so envisioning those thoughts as originating from a separate entity um, is a beneficial way to to deal with them because it doesn't tie your thoughts to your identity. The minute you tie something to your identity, um, then refuting it would be refuting your own self. And and that's never going to happen. You That's when you take up a defensive position. Right. We talked about right. that in, in how to win friends and influence people. The minute you attack something that someone is then they have nothing to do but defend it because they are defending they their themselves. They shell up, right, right. Exactly. Right. Uh, so so this is a, a good way of avoiding doing that. Um, and then this kind of all comes under the umbrella, I believe, um, of, of talking to ourselves, right? And, and this is kind of where we were talking about in The, uh, the Righteous Mind uh, by Jonathan Haidt. Um, actually, that book has come up this week uh, uh, it's only Wednesday. It's already come up three times and three separate occasions, uh, uh, not even related yeah. to each other. Like I, I don't know what it is, but 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 that book for sure. You know, talking about you know the elephant and, and the rider, right? Um, the the one way he's like you can influence your elephant, right? You can reason to your elephant, right? But it has to be you know very. Very loving reasoning, right? Um, you know, story-based reasoning works too. But like, you can you can reason with yourself. But like, if you if you don't have that mentality of um, my thoughts are not myself, then there's there's no reason to try to talk yourself out of 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 obsessing over this, right? Of obsessing over every single thought that comes up, right? So what, what can we do? We can, we can actually talk to ourselves. And, and that's uh, also, you know, the point of above, you know, knowing that doctrine, that's, that's what we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves truth, right? Um, and we can tell ourselves the, the truth that we know to be true. Um, and it's not like we haven't talked about this before. So it's like, 
th- when I when I say this is the culmination of a lot of things that we've talked about, you know, we we, we had just gone over the righteous mind, right? Um, Jack, I know you had talked in length about system one uh, influencing system two processes in your yeah. brain. That's another way to conceptualize it. Um, another way is the prefrontal cortex, you know, in- influencing the mammalian brain, the lizard brain, all of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. The, the the left hemisphere talking to the right hemisphere. I mean, we have all of these narratives to, to talk about this, right? We, we have all of these stories in which we can conceptualize ourselves, uh, you know, taking our thoughts captive, right? We, we can, we can see ourselves doing that in, in these stories. Um, and, and a story that, that really, I think got me started thinking about this was the Hyperion Cantos. Um, and, and I linked to, and this is the fourth book. It is a, there's like super spoilers in this link. So if you haven't read it, uh, it go through the other four, three and a half books before you get here. But, um, the, one, one, one of the culminations is this, uh, this this girl, right? This I I think she's probably about sixteen or eighteen at the time, right? And she's she's endowed with all of these special abilities, you know, and and, and she's going through. She's seen as a hero to a lot of people, uh, and and she was thinking about her legacy and you know the the wisdom that she was given that she wants to pass on in a manageable way to people. And she's like, well, you know, I started to 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 get out my message. I was like, I, I need to get out my message. She's like, it would fill tomes, right? It would, it would just absolutely fill, fill, you know, so many different pages. So she's like, so I tried to narrow it down to a book. And I was like, that's too much. So I tried to narrow it down to a chapter. She's like, that's too much in a page and a paragraph and a sentence. And she's like, finally I got it to, to two words. And, and, and the guy, she's like, he's like, all right, you got to be kidding me. But like, okay, <laughs> what? And, and she came up with these two words. The two words she came up with were choose again, right? And we all have the capacity to choose again, right? It, it doesn't matter what you did in the past. Well, I mean, it does, but you always have the choice to choose again. That's what we have as, as humans, right? For better or for worse, we have the choice to choose again. We get the ability to talk to ourselves. We get the ability to reason with ourselves and we have the ability to choose to take our thoughts captive, right? Right. We don't need to be swept along with the tide. We don't need to let whatever will happen will happen. We, we have choice and, and that's huge. There's, there's no, nothing else in the history of the world has had choice. Like we have choice, right? And, and we have choice uh, in, in everything we do, not just taking our thoughts captive, right? But coming back to exactly why we started this in the first place, the, the, the software we use, right? The communities that we, we run in, the, 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 the tools, right, that, that we use. And I've made a choice to, and, and I continue to make a choice. I, I continue to choose again to prioritize this over right. watching TV, over chowing down an entire pumpkin pie, right? I, I continue to prioritize, uh, among other things, you know, working on this. And we're going to keep putting this stuff out, right? We're, we're keeping on working on this. We are rededicating ourselves, right? That's, that's what we do at these, these quarterly meetings, right? We choose again what to pursue, right? We say, okay, here is all the data and now we have more input for us to choose again. Right, right. And we have continued to choose to, or we've, we've, choose, we've chosen to continue on this journey, right? To continue to produce the software because we believe this is the ethical, sustainable way to contribute to, to help other people, right? If you're on board with that, I mean, Arcompose.com. That's going to have the link uh, that you can sign up for the mailing list, where you're going to get these episodes and more, uh, and you're going to be able to join us. You know, we're, we're, we'll, we'll point you to the the GitHub you know, you, in, in in GitLab if if that's something you're interested in. You know, we'll we'll gladly sit down and go over you know what what finances look like, right? But the last thing I want is for anyone to sit there and let this wash over them and refuse to choose because right. that is that is the unique benefit that we have and 
we should not be wasting it. And after all that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of our Composecast. Thank you, be safe, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Bye, everybody.